Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Herewith, we are demonstrating the technique of distal hyperspadis repair with Pierce Duplay technique. Initially, the assessment of the anatomy is very important, especially the urethral plate length, width, and the depth measurement, followed by the glance width, and if there is a cordy associated. Two stay sutures are placed at the future distal neomiatus with a 6 OPDS suture. A 5 French feeding tube is placed across and the tunica applied. The marking is performed as shown here on either side of the urethral plate, including the hypospadic meatal opening. The urethral plate on the glance is incised using a sharp ophthalmic eye knife. Followed by this, the hypospadic meatal opening is carefully separated from the ventral skin using a 15 blade. The lateral wings are incised at the same time so as to keep a nice cuff for the future frenular reconstruction. It's very important to follow the traction and counter traction for precise incision and mobilization of the glands, urethral plate and ventral skin. The ventral foreskin is carefully separated from the urethra using the sharp eye knife or iris scissor. Followed by this, the glance flaps are elevated using a serrated scissor. which allows the separation and incision precisely and in a proper depth. It's very important to mobilize the glass flaps adequate so that the urethroplasty could be performed and the glass flaps brought over the urethra satisfactorily. The urethral plate is incised dorsally so as to relieve the tension on the future neoerythra. We perform the neoerythra formation using a 6 OPDS suture, single layer, subcuticular layer. The suturing is very is parallel to the urethra, which includes a nice submucosal tissue. As the urethroplasty is advanced distally, it's very important not to advance too distally or tighten it too tight which can cause future fistula due to obstruction.
the darter's layer is mobilized from the lateral aspect of the phallus from the foreskin either right or left side it's not necessary to go on to dorsal aspect for mobilizing this darter's flap The vascularized darter's flap is secured lateral to the neurourethra at the tip to the underlying carporal tissue. Again, the material used is 6O PDS. The glance plasty is performed with interrupted 6O PDS sutures. Again, similar subcuticular fashion. Three sutures are placed, one distal towards the meatus, second in middle, and the third one at the coronal sulcus. After placement of the three sutures, they are tied adequate tension without much force. Every step of the operation is very important to understand the tension on the tissue and the vascularity and handling of the tissue. These are very critical steps for the successful outcomes. Following the glance plasty, nephronilum is created with the interrupted sutures using the same suture material that is 6O PDS. At this stage, the tunica is removed and then attention turn for the skin arrangement. The circumcoronal incision made on the dorsal aspect so as to create an excellent mucosal cuff. Precaution is taken at this stage to mobilize the skin, making sure that the darter's flap which is brought from the right lateral aspect is not severed so that the blood supply is cut off. The foreskin is mobilized to base of the penis which corrects most of the time the ventral curvature in distal hypospadias. If it is not the curvature of the phallus it could be corrected at this stage. The dorsal skin is split in midline just to adequate to cover to the whole phallus. And then excise the redundant foreskin. Initially, the ventral skin is brought to the frenulum. Attention is 
turn to make sure that there is no tension so that the penoscrotal junction is pulled towards the frenulum. Following the ventral midline arrangement, the distal redundant foreskin excised on either side. and approximation of the skin to mucosa performed with interrupted sexopedias sutures in a satisfactory fashion. A point to be noted that there is almost more than 50% of the resident participation in this procedure. It's very important to put the dressing in an appropriate compressive fashion. The 5 inch feeding tube is secured to the gland suture. And a compression duodrum dressing applied for the hemostasis. and reinforced by the tegadam. The catheter and the dressing will be left for 5 to 7 days and the catheter in the form of feeding tube drains into double diaper. The patient is given anticholinergics pain medication and antibiotics for the duration of the dressing and the feeding tube. These are the saline instruments we prefer for distal hyperspadis repair. It's a personal choice. As long as the surgical outcomes are excellent, we should continue to use the personal preference of instruments. This is a final outcome at one year follow-up after the distal hypospadis repair. Thank you.